The movie starts in a university lab, where a student named Devon is playing a strange, frequency-like sound on his computer. The sound is like that of a distorted radio, but in a very eerie way. Meanwhile, the lab in charge, Professor Richard, enters the room and questions Devon about what he's doing. Devon reveals that he picked up the frequency from another galaxy, and suggests that they do further research on it. He even claims that the sound has a repetitive pattern, which is very soothing to hear. However, the professor cannot hear any patterns, and he tells Devon to switch off the sound. He also tells the boy to focus on other work rather than wasting his time on unnecessary stuff, which has no educational value at all. Expectedly, Devon is upset, as he was hoping that the professor would help him. Despite this, he decides to continue his research, and leaves the lab with a cassette containing the strange sound. Later, when he reaches home, he is caught off guard as his teen sister Joyce and her boyfriend Vic are making out. Devin immediately orders the two to put on some clothes before walking away. Next, he reaches his room and starts examining the strange frequency once again, in hopes of finding some clues. Just then, Joyce approaches him and makes him promise that he won't reveal about the earlier incident to their dad. Devin loves his sister very much, so he agrees without hesitation. He then tells her to focus on her studies and stay away from trouble, because if dad finds out about it, she will be grounded. Saying this much, he puts his computer in sleep mode and goes to bed. Shortly after, Joyce snoops around his work desk and decides to go through his stuff. She also puts on his headphones, and as soon as she turns on the computer, it starts playing the strange sound. Surprisingly, Joyce is taken over by the sound, and she begins experiencing an immense sense of pleasure. Some strange waves also go through her fingers, implying that there is something magical about the frequency. In the next scene, we are introduced to Dr. Emery, who is a renowned surgeon in the city. He is also the father and only parent of Devon and Joyce. After a long night shift at the hospital, he returns home to find Joyce still hypnotized by the strange frequency. It appears that she listened to the sound the whole night. Angry, Dr. Emery scolds his daughter and asks her if she took any narcotics, but the latter calmly replies that she was just listening to music. She also suggests that he listen to the music, but when Dr. Emery checks her pulse, he notices that it has dropped significantly. Significantly. Before he can take any action, Joyce gets up and leaves for school. She also takes the strange cassette along with her. After a while, Devin wakes up and starts chatting with his father. When he finds out that Joyce has taken his cassette, he immediately rushes outside to stop her, but it's too late. Meanwhile, Joyce is heading to school in her boyfriend's minivan. As Vic is driving, Joyce suddenly plays the cassette. Just like before, she is hypnotized by the sound, and strangely, Vic also enjoys it. The two then discuss the sound, saying it's the most soothing music they've ever heard. They then decide to share the music with their friends, so that they can also experience the same euphoria. After a while, Joyce and Vic reach school, where Devin is already waiting for them. He demands his cassette back, but the hypnotized duo is hesitant to return it. Instead, they try to make Devin understand that the sound is a form of music, which will make one calm and happy. Devin, who is an intelligent science student, immediately refutes their claim and tries to take his cassette back, but Vic pushes him to the ground and asks him to stay away. Seeing the commotion, some other students start gathering around the place, and Devin is forced to leave. After this, he heads to his lab, where Professor Richard is busy with his research on the rising solar radiations. However, Devin pays little attention to it, and heads home with another copy of the frequency. Back at the school, several students have joined Joyce and Vic, and together they are listening to the strange sound. They appear to be hypnotized by the sound that they all refer to as music. Just then, the school principal, who is for some reason unaffected by the sound, enters the minivan and stops the music. He then orders the students to get back to their classrooms, but they refuse. Instead, they get inside the minivan and drive away, saying that they'll listen to their music somewhere else. Meanwhile, Devin video calls his Japanese scientist friend, Kelly, and asks her to examine the strange sound. After he hangs up the call, Dr. Emery enters the room and inquires inquires about Joyce's strange behavior as of late. Devin appears to be confused too, but he reveals that Joyce has been listening to the strange frequency, which appears to be some kind of music. He then tries to explain the same to his dad, but the old man thinks that his children are messing around. Before going to sleep, he hands his car keys to Devin and asks him to go look for Joyce. Later that night, Devin enters a nightclub, where the students from before are partying, with the same frequency blasting in the background. Even a DJ is present there to 
add effects to the already disturbing sound. As Devin examines the place, he notices that several of the students have been afflicted with a strange skin disease. They seem to have golden lesions on their face. Devin quickly rushes to Joyce to find that even she has been infected. He tries to take her away, but Joyce doesn't want to go. She mentions that the music is giving her energy, a kind that she has lacked her entire life. With no options left, Devin heads up to Skrillex and turns off the music. As soon as he does so, all the students start screaming in a state of panic, as if they are being tortured. Because of this, Devin heads to a nearby telephone booth and calls for help. In the next scene, we are taken to the hospital, where Dr. Emery is examining his daughter. By this time, her condition is degraded even more. Devin talks to his dad about the diagnosis, and Dr. Emery reveals that Joyce has an unusually large amount of metal inside her blood. He also reveals that 72 other students are also experiencing the same symptoms. The next day, they again examine Joyce and find that her irises are changing. Worried, Dr. Emery realizes that something is wrong and immediately calls the Center of Disease Control. A while later, the head of the CDC, Dr. Riddle, reaches the hospital and examines Joyce. She then informs the father-son duo that Joyce is suffering from a rare disease, which affects the pituitary glands. She suspects that the students might have taken some sort of ecstasy, but Devin denies it. He then shows her the strange cassette and mentions that all the students became infected after listening to it. As expected, Dr. Riddle laughs at the theory, as a disease cannot transmit via sound. Dr. Emery also supports her, but Devin requests that they at least check on Kelly, who also has a copy of the frequency. If she is found to be infected, his theory will be proved. Although confused, Dr. Riddle agrees to contact the authorities in Japan. Later, Devin heads inside the quarantine zone, where all the infected students are being kept. They have become extremely weak, and some are on the verge of death. Then, he visits Joyce, who is also in a lot of pain. She requests that he play the music, as it will cure her, but Devin refuses. He then walks away, but not before promising his sister that she will be fine. At home, Devin watches the news and again learns that the solar radiations are reaching dangerously extreme levels. Tired of all the negative news around him, he shuts down his computer and goes to sleep. When he wakes up, he finds his dad, along with several military soldiers, in the house. The soldiers are there to confiscate all his equipment, as it has been proven that the frequency is indeed causing the children to become sick. Confused, Devin asks his father about what's happening, to which the latter replies that there is been a similar virus outbreak in Nagago, Japan, the same city where Kelly is residing. He also reveals that the Japanese Prime Minister has declared the disease as a pandemic. Hearing this, Devin is taken aback and he starts blaming himself for the entire incident, which he probably should. It's his fault after all. Just when he thinks that things can't get any worse, he notices that his hands have also started getting infected. Later that day, the United States also declares a state of emergency, and a meeting is held at the White House. Among the attendees are Devin, Dr. Emery, and some other important people. Dr. Emery mentions that the disease is spreading at a rapid rate, but for some reason, most of the infected are teenagers. People from the age group of 20 to 24 are slightly infected, whereas those above 24 are totally immune. This is why Devin was affected very late, as he is now 23 years old. As the group continues discussing, the head of the US military rises from his seat and declares that the frequency is sent by the aliens as an act of war. The next day, Devin and Dr. Emery return to the hospital, where Joyce is still kept in isolation. Her symptoms have worsened, and she can barely speak. With time running out, the father-son duo decides to test out a newly devised frequency, which apparently reverses the effects of the alien frequency. Joyce continuously begs her father to play her favorite music, claiming that it is the only thing that can heal her, but Dr. Emery refuses. After a while, a nurse brings out a cassette player and plays the high-pitched sound. This badly hurts Joyce, and after a while, she passes out. Her heart also stops working, sending Dr. Emery into a state of panic. He tries performing all sorts of medical procedures to revive her, but it all goes in vain. Just then, Devin comes up with an idea. He rushes to a 
prohibited section of the hospital and retrieves the cassette. He then returns to Joyce and plays the strange frequency, and surprisingly, she comes back to life. Joyce mentions that she is now ready to face it. Stunned, Dr. Emery inquires about what she's talking about, but Joyce remains silent. Witnessing all this, Devin becomes curious and begins researching the source of the sound. The next morning, he meets his dad and Dr. Riddle at the hospital and shares a groundbreaking discovery. He reveals that the frequency is not a disease, but in fact, a cure. Devin supports his claim by mentioning that the only students who have died of the disease are the ones that the hospital tried to cure. He also brings up the incident where Joyce mentions that she was ready. Unsurprisingly, the doctors are confused by the theories, but Devin summarizes that the frequency is trying to adapt them to the harmful solar radiations. He then shows a bunch of plants that he experimented on last night. He exposed them to high amounts of radiation, but the only ones that were able to survive were the ones that were blasted with the same frequency. Following this, he takes the doctors to Professor Richard's lab, where they verify that the sun is actually emitting extremely harmful levels of radiation. In fact, in just a matter of months, the whole world will perish if they don't adapt to the radiation. Professor Richard researches a bit further and finds out that the frequency came from a distant planet, which is 10 light years away from Earth. The planet already experienced the same levels of radiation, which ravaged their entire population. With this information, Devin concludes that the aliens from that planet sent the frequency to Earth so that they could save the humans. In the next scene, another meeting is held in the White House, and the representatives unanimously decide to play the music to the public. They have also engineered a new form of music, which will affect adults too. In no time, the entire world is blasted with the frequency, infecting much of the population. A few months later, we are shown that Joyce has fully turned into an alien, one which is completely immune to the harmful radiation. Devin also looks similar, but their dad, Dr. Emery, has decided against transforming, as he wants to die in a natural way and meet his wife in heaven. He mentions that he is willing to live his entire life inside his home, as he is bored of working anyways. The movie again fast forwards by a month, and this time, the harmful radiations have taken over the world. The movie ends as Joyce and her friends venture outside and enjoy their time while Dr. Emery looks at them through the window. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.